Hello, I am Laura Fetikus. This is a walkthrough for the Ministry Challenge map, Annihilation. Uh, it's also a roast because the map is bad and I'm gonna point out a lot of ways that it's bad. Pull it up in the editor, go around looking at things before actually starting. There are six or seven of these blue bases that start out and the way that it works is it randomly blows up all of them but one and then gives you that one base to start. So the start is randomized. Many of these bases are bad. All of them are bad in different ways. It's, there's a wide range of ways that you can be bad. Uh, many of the silicon factories don't have sand going into them. These ones start out with two fluid sources. So if you're lucky enough to get this base, when you start out, then you've got, you know, free ozone, free cyanogen, nice. Uh, those power plants won't work because the arcosite source blows up. That sucks. And this base here, this one starts with a power source. So if you spawn at this one, you get a power source. Great. Besides that aspect of it, it is all just map editor spam, like 10 or 15 cores of it, every space filled in with walls or whatever. There's power sources and liquid sources and item sources all throughout this. There's no like actual economy or everything. It's just a bunch of spam all over the place. And, you know, it's a 600 by 600 map that 75% of it is full of stuff that you just have to grind through. And the last base has 15 scythes. No, scathe. And, and latiums. There's latiums down there in a the corner. Okay. Just a whole bunch of stuff. So as far as I can tell, I haven't seen any evidence that anyone has actually ever beaten this map. Uh, it actually came to my attention, someone showed me, I guess, the, the trailer YouTube. There's like a five minute long thing of what may be the person that made the map, uh, playing it and speeding it up and doing some cutting through. And they just build bad schematics in the starting area. Uh, they make it doesn't look like they attack at all, and then eventually they die as the escalating spawns come after them. That's not what I'm going to do. Uh, also, I don't think I'm going to put up a three-hour video. I can prove that I did it, and I did it uh, Iron Man. So no, no pausing, no map-specific sch schematics, and no saves coming. Main reason why the randomized start sucks as a concept is because you're pretty much telling the player restart until you get the base that you want, which isn't fun. If you want to have different starts, then make different maps. Don't just add a thing that's trivial to reduce scum. And I do, I want this base. Uh, I am going to take down the liquid sources. I don't think it's reasonable to actually, or, it's not a reasonable challenge to do it while keeping the liquid sources. That's stupid. And if I get the power source map uh, base, I'll turn that off too. All right, so absolute first thing to do, you, you start out with full resources, except uh, everything below oxide. And you got 20 minutes before anything attacks at all. So, Absolute first thing to do is some oxide factories. And then after that, the second thing you need to do is there is one patch of wall thorium in the starting area. And you gotta go to that and put up some large drills. And that's why you needed the oxide first. This entire starting base is garbage. I'm just gonna ignore it. There's some randomized thing that blows up arbitrary blocks inside of it, so it's all broken anyway, and maybe the map maker thinks that you would waste three minutes going through fixing all of these bad schematics and useless defenses. 
And that's a waste of time. Don't do that. Uh, but what I do need is I need to, to set up a ton of belts that feed into this core and only this core. There's there's like another seven or eight core spots available in the whole empty space. But the problem with those is that if you build a core on those, then the enemy pathing is going to change. And the actual reason that I want this base is because this has the easiest pathing to defend. Uh, all of the enemy base spawns are going to head for the, the right entryway of this particular base. And it's absolutely the easiest to defend. Like Number one thing that makes a map too easy is if all the enemies approach from the same place. And then you just build one big defense and you're safe. As far as I can tell, I haven't seen any evidence that anyone has ever beaten this map. I, I looked around some, uh, you know, forum searches and Google searches and whatever. I actually kind of doubted at first if any, like if it was even possible, but you know, once I figured out that I could get all the enemies into one spot, then it seemed totally doable. And then once I figured that out and thought a little harder, I thought, okay, well, maybe it is possible that somebody's actually beaten this map before and they just didn't post anywhere about it, which, you know, that could be true. But that'll be the first documented version. Uh, I do have like a full three hour video of doing the whole thing and proving that like I didn't save scum or pause or anything like that, but I'm not going to post that unless someone's like a real whiner about saying I'm lying that I beat it. It's like 18 gigabytes of footage. It would take forever. Okay. So Thorium's coming in. I do eventually need to set up some real basic resource production. So your, your beryllium and your silicon and graphite. It's just easier to get this graphite. It is not particularly broken, although getting hydrogen in there is kind of requires too much thinking. Some of those blocks are broken, others are not. Uh, eventually, once I have build towers and nitrogen, I'll just tear all of that down and it's getting replaced with uh, lusters, repairs, walls. Uh, mass lusters are the way to go. Uh, cheap input, uh, relatively cheap compared to the other uh, carbide tier towers, pierces through armor, and if everything's coming from the same direction, then the slow speed doesn't matter, like the turning speed. Okay, build towers, and I got the nitrogen from the first oxide heat. Uh, these are set up to help build a larger oxide array. And they're gonna uh, they're gonna help build a pyrolysis factory as well. Like that's the first power plant that I'm gonna build because there's just free vents all over the place. Fifteen five, first five minutes done, and the uh, the buffer on resources left over is still good. Once I start like dropping uh, factories with build towers, then I'm gonna run myself out of resources real quick. Uh, and the point of this thing, not only am I going to need a lot of oxide over the course of things, uh, the heat for this is very efficient going into carbide, and that'll be my carbide production for the game, uh, which, you know, I want to progress through the tech tiers quickly, and especially, you know, before things start attacking. So we're going we're gonna to get all the way up through phase uh, before the attacking starts. Although we're not gonna we're not gonna get the, the unit factories on. So once I have my defense set up and brain dead and don't need to think about it, then it's a matter of building the units to actually move forward. And because of the dumb way that there's just so many bases with all of the turrets and all of the free 
power and ammo and everything. You just have to range spam all of it. So Kolaris all the way, maximum Kolaris. Uh, you gotta combine that with a little bit of air defense because sometimes a stray avert will come for your Kolaris. Uh, that can be done with like the Claroid that are left over from your, your factory for building the Kolaris. Uh, I'm also gonna build averts and Quell factories are just too cheap to pass up. They'll be able to kill some of the stuff, though they're not good against like disperses or afflicts. But they are good about taking care of uh, chunks of titans. There's the only things that really threaten the Kolaris that you face here are uh, some titan arrays and those 15 skates on the last base. That's the one that really needs the quells for. Uh, This would be the tungsten that goes into the carbide. So I'm not going to need to defend any of this stuff down here. Um, because the attacking unit's path to the core, I can freely build behind it uh, and not worry about defending it at all. Uh, usually most of the problems that I have are trying to fit building inputs that need to be routed to the core. There's not much space around it and there's all that cruft in the way. And so everything's gonna have to fit into four belts and it's gonna clog a lot. Uh, I suppose if I bothered to build surge, then I could send surge belts up that way, but I'm not gonna build surge. I don't need to and it'll waste time. So instead I got four input belts and that's what you're limited to. Sometimes I'll have to unclog them. Yeah. Trying to figure out a spot to put a silicon. I need at least one building silicon. Silicon is one of the ingredients in lusters, and so that's going to run out quick and frequently. All right, this is starting to build phase production. So I need 600 phase for the T5 module on the Kolaris factory. And then the rest of it's going to go into more efficient heating, which I'm going to use to make the materials that go into the T5 factory. And there's these orange patches of walls that make the best uh, sand sources. So, And I've got a, a tank. Well, no. I'm going to have to build another uh, vent cap to get ozone to put into this thing, because that one's already going to the oxide. Another complaint about the map was just ugly. So those metal floors, they're, they're scratched across the entire thing with like a map filter, standard thing that you can do with the ministry map editor where you can do like slashes of ore or walls. In this case, it's metal floor tiles and it just cuts across the entire thing and looks like garbage. There's, there's no reason for those metal floors to be there breaking up the, the natural terrain. Uh, another weird thing, it's probably there to get the spawning right because there's this blue team that owns all the bases to start and then they get transferred to the player team, but the one shard core from the circular tile set with like a bajillion world processors around it, uh, ready to do gimmick stuff, and there's some message blocks that have writing on it that I can't read. So, you know, maybe I would have a better opinion if I could read that and it actually explain something that I have a complaint about, but I am unable to do that. These build towers are for where I plan to put my uh, Claroid factory. And then I'm going to use mass drivers to, to eat those things to where I eventually put the T5 production. Nine minutes until attack starts. Pull down the nitrogen. Yeah, and that's going to be the oxide for the phase. Build towers in general are absolutely critical for this whole thing. 
like the amount of building that you need to do, the auto repairing, uh, getting things done quickly. Once you've got a ton of like you know building materials production set up, super necessary. Okay, that part we're starting to prepare for the pyrolysis. I'm going to end up building two of these total. This is the best power source. I probably actually could afford like a, a Neo reactor, but I don't really have the muscle memory for setting those up. And then I would use some of the phase, which isn't quite available yet. And I do need to upgrade from just uh, capping uh, vent condenser things to actually producing real power. All right, real power online. Start work on the T2. Yeah, and I can reuse a bunch of my PVP schematics doing this. First stop setting this up is just getting the water into it and it running and the overflow from it sent up to the core. That'll, that'll produce tungsten. And then I'll be able to go back later and finish up. It needs uh, sand, beryllium, and graphite in particular amounts. And that sand spot down on the left is gonna be what I use for the source. Seven minutes to go. So yeah, once I get to like four or five minutes-ish, then I'm gonna wanna start actually putting lusters in place in the front of the main base. You need that, you need repairers, and then you, you put some walls in the way. And, and that'll fry everything that approaches. The lusters do waste some time turning, especially like when the verts approach from a different direction. And I'll like, turn all the way around to behind them just to burn this one stupid little thing and then turn all the way back. But if you get enough of them and you space them out enough, then, you know, even if one luster turns all the way around, there'll be another one that can focus on things. And interestingly enough, that kind of defense scales until like all the future waves, like it'll First unit production is T2 stuff. Second round of production is T3 stuff, and then T4, and then T5. And all of those get burned down by 15 lusters in a kind of concentrated pile. Another gimmick that this map is eventually doing, the final wave includes, so those, those latums that we pass, like, unfinished content from the Eriker game in the map. Uh, I actually never even find out how strong the things are because what the map does with them is there are disrupts on the enemy team that pick them up and then carry them towards my base. I assume that they're being told by processors to drop them near my core but they never get that far because the lusters kill them. So I never actually see the Latiums fight anything. Uh, they make the Disrupt look pretty cool because it's got like spikes poking out of the edge and it's a darker gray color. But if it's holding something and it crashes, then whatever it's holding is just dead without being able to fire a shot. I don't even know what weapon the Latiums use and you never see that. Uh, another fun thing that you can do once you get to the end is that little like walled off pen where the latiums are spawned in. It's got ozone source blocks in it. So if you blow one of those up, the explosion kills all the latiums immediately. So you get like one good area fire in there from like a quell or something. You blow up the source block and it kills all of them and the whole piece of content never fires. Now, another processor gimmick that's going on here. In the higher uh, production waves, if you kill a high tier unit, two of the same tree of units, but one tier down spawn in the same place. So like you, you kill a conquer and it spawns two vanquish 
you kill the two vanquish and you end up with four precepts and you kill the precepts and you end up with eight locusts and some of those go down to tier two and some of them don't i don't know if the logic is broken or, or whatever there's a number of things around that are just uh broken or i'm not sure if it's supposed to work that way it's the map is clearly not play tested uh i mean you know it takes me three hours to do this. I wouldn't expect a playtester to be able to go through it to actually like debug whatever problem, especially with like weird logic stuff going on. So, you know, it's built sloppy. All right, with these build towers in place, I can start taking down the bad spawn base. We get all this stuff out of the way. This is all turned into lusters. I don't know why there's cargo depositors there. There's nothing amongst the, the blue base that has cargo drones in it. So I don't know why that's there. Uh, it looks sort of like in the description that this map might be a modified version of a previous map. I don't, I couldn't find any information about that either. Uh, it might be another bug in logic stuff, but there's a number of blocks there that I can't uh, deconstruct. I don't know why. Like something puts them back or whatever. And that's actually, that's pretty in the way for me. This is valuable real estate right here because uh, I wanna put, I wanna be putting walls and lusters in the way. Uh, the one nitrogen factory there is nowhere near enough. I'm gonna end up with like four or five of those to, to fuel these things. And repair, I got two minutes until combat starts. Yeah, and the, the unit approach, everything's headed for this core, so I gotta worry about nothing behind it. There's a little bit of air that comes from the sort of northern right direction. So I'll have to put at least a little bit of stuff up there. These, I thought maybe those supplements would be better at killing averts that go straight to the core. But as I watched it, actually, this was the first time I tried to do that. It never, it didn't make any difference. I'm gonna just done without those or maybe move them forward a little bit. Mm. So I gotta put another batch of build towers to, to remove the cruft at the top there. All right, and here I am discovering a fun exploit. Uh, I can pick up those blocks with the ship and move them and then deconstruct them for re free resources. So, you know, this door will turn into tungsten and silicon. So if, if I could be arsed to do it, I could move a bunch of these and deconstruct them and get a bunch of free tungsten and silicon. Tremendous waste of time, but whatever. Just another thing that's broken. Mm, 30 seconds to go until the first waves start. So all of the units are coming from unit factories in the enormous amount of grind that is the purple base all over this map. So the game actually gets easier as you make progress in attacking because fewer stuff is spawning against you to the point that it, uh, near the end it's it's totally trivial. So the actual sort of hinge point on whether you're gonna succeed or not is the point uh, being able to keep yourself safe until you can get the unit factories to, to build the Kolaris that can actually make progress on bases. And here we go. Luster, luster, luster. Way overpowered, especially for uh, bad attack AI. And who knows what would happen if you turned on like RTS AI probably be absolutely terrible. I didn't try it. His RTS AI would 
go to all the stuff that you can't spend time defending because you need a bunch of it to actually progress up the tech tree. Like if I had to put these lusters surrounding everything that I built, uh, I don't know if it would be possible. And there's only 20 minutes until the next exhalation and the, one of the gaps is 30 minutes. going up here go put the router put the router let's go and knowing the approach paths makes this a lot easier you want to sort of set up a, a concave of lusters so that they all start firing on the path at the same point and it just concentrates everything down you know even when multiple conquerors are approaching and it's burning them down one at a time, they're able to go so quickly that even like the exponential spawning of lower tier units from killing them uh, can't manage to get through. Get out of the way, power nodes. Need to make sure that enough nitrogen is going in to feed those things. Build tower would have been a good idea to start with, but whatever. No, it is, yeah. So the nitrogen is being burned out and things are, this is a dangerous point right here. Things might actually be able to get through this if I hadn't increased the nitrogen supply right there. They actually got some stuff destroyed, but now that that problem is fixed, then they can clear out that glut of averts that had built up. Clairoid point defense does nothing against the uh, muster beams, and that's another thing. Like, Clairoid is generally very good at defending something. Like, you know, you have your your Claroy or your Claris, they can't defend against air. You put Claroy under them and they're shooting down all sorts of stuff that tries to come after you. Although the unit cap is an issue for like getting a big enough pile of Claroy to, to really be good at that. Uh, I will build a few more cores to get higher unit cap, but you have to be real careful because if you build the wrong cores, then that changes the approach pathing. Uh, and you're going to end up with units going places that they you're not prepared for and, and doing real damage to you. I need this thorium because that's going to go into carbide wall constructors for T5 construction. Time for another power plant. Let's go. Probably be good to put another build tower over here to help this go a little faster, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm also running real low on tungsten. Like it's, again, real easy to run yourself out of building resources when doing this, especially with a bunch of build towers open. Another weird thing about like the way the teams are set up, the, the blue team has like an AI player unit that doesn't die when all the blue team stuff got killed at the very beginning. But it does think that it should rebuild. So it ends up putting like unconstructed blue base buildings in one of the cores, the one that it's close to. And if you ever want to actually build in that space, then you have to send a unit to clear out all of these unconstructed buildings. That's annoying. Oh, and there was an avert that turned into two eludes when you killed it. Okay, sure. Gimmicks, let's have some gimmicks. 
you know, there's that blue player unit there. Put some stuff in the way. I'm gonna have to send like a Claroy down there to get rid of that. So these Argosite are for cyanogen. I've got a, a schematic that has two carbide crucibles and a cyanogen and phase heaters. And this is sized for making the inputs that you need for T5 construction. So I'm starting to work on my Calaris production here. I don't really have the carbide for it saved up yet. And I will need to stop and go over and start working on uh, beefing up the, the defense line a little bit. So another big benefit of the starter base that I chose by avoiding the, the randomness, which is trivial to avoid, the units that spawn to the south and the southeast all approach in a wide line that crosses along the front of my building space. So I can put a row of lusters that are just barely in range of that line and they'll just fry everything as it drives past and doesn't shoot back. Although when Anthesis comes, they do shoot back, but you know, repair towers and some walls and it's fine. And it can trivially thin out huge amounts of the attacking unit stream that is constantly coming. I've noticed I need more tungsten. What am I gonna do about that? Hopefully something. My second power plant, I forgot to hook up the finish the Arcosite pipe, so I don't have the power from that yet. It looks like I don't need it. That's fine. Yeah, I just need a little bit of this because I want more tungsten. Well, these are going to build slow because I don't have tungsten. And there's a derp. I don't want more thorium. I don't need more building thorium. I'm already like at the max for one core. No, that should be going to those boys to the south there. Figure it out. Yeah, all right, I'm figuring it out, great. But a problem of just increasing what those bores are producing is it's gonna mess up like you know the distribution of resources to those four ducts that are heading to my core for depositing building material. So every now and then I'll have to go back and check what's clogged and add a, a duct router to divert it to something else. Getting ready to send the phase down to the heating array for the T5 construction. One more, sure, yeah. Cheap electric heat, put it wherever you want, easy to connect. Feels like circular. Not like all this other air care stuff that you got a spaghetti because everything needs a ton of different kinds of inputs and pipes. And no core unloading. No core unloading, that's, that's the recipe for spaghetti. Uh, the blue guy's busy down here rebuilding stuff. It's not quite in the way there because I think I'm going to build this uh, to the left a bit. So, hmm. Defense is holding. Going to have that situational awareness. Bridges. Yeah, sometimes uh, if you're building bridges, they will connect in ways that you don't want them to automatically, just the way Eric here bridges work, and you gotta go back and clean things out. Take some brillium, throw it on the ground. Throw it on the ground. Boof, get out of here. Eventually, I will 
No, oh, and I connected this backwards. Whoops. I don't think I want to throw a tungsten on the ground, though. Oh, well, yeah. Let's save that precious tungsten. And this factory is for adding lusters and build towers to the front line here. So I can see the path of approaching units, and I can put the luster right on the edge where it sh sh takes pot shots at everything that comes by. And then I can make a line of those, and it'll, you know, it'll outright kill a lot of stuff that comes by. Dead tank. Dead tank. It, yeah, it, it's clear, it's got some, the lusters clearly have a priority scale of going after what it perceives as the most dangerous thing it sees. Uh, so it definitely looks like it wants to go for tanks before anything else, which is fine. The cat wants in. Come on, you. Yes. All right. Yeah, watch me play this game. Important commentary. So I've run myself out of silicon building lusters, and now I need to go back and actually add more silicon and make sure that I find a duct that's got spare capacity so that it actually gets to a core. And that's why I can't finish this one, missing silicon. Now I'm going to start scoping out the actual T5. Since all the, the hard part of the materials is done, there's no like schematic left to do it. It's just the T5 factory itself and the module thing that makes it do T5s. I'm going to extend this down. Once you get a long enough line of those, then nothing from the southern approach actually survives. And a lot of them end up being idle for most of the game, which is probably a mistake, but you know, whatever. It's not gonna cost me the game. Maybe cost me some time. And yeah, now we have the second power plant, great. Yeah, I got the unit cap for Clairoy. And let's start putting down the Kolaris factory. So I do want to leave space for payload conveyors to, to feed into this so that there's a buffer and it has a bit more uptime than it would if you were just pouring directly into it. You also want to use the input from the module. So one of those is going to take the blocks and the other is going to take the units. You gotta be real careful when you're putting it in to, you know, fit into threes. If your ducts don't line up exactly, then they won't work. They won't like dump onto one that is off skew to it. That silicon shortage still slowing me down though. Five minutes to the next ex escalation. I think, if I remember correctly, I am surprised when I see the first Anthicus showing up. But it still survives fine. Mm. Yeah, so that's clogged and not letting phase through. Though I don't really need the phase at this point, I have plenty for what I want to build.
I can't actually place this thing until I finish the T5 factory. That's annoying. Things still look fine up here. And the primary defense against Anthicus, which is the PvP standard, is belts or ducts and build towers. And so the Anthicus missiles blow up on the ducts uselessly, and then the build towers rebuild them cheaply. And so the missiles never actually hit anything of value. It's also a primary defense against scathes. Although it's not what I'm going to use. And it especially doesn't work well against 15 scathes, which is something that you would never see in a real game against a human. Only a map editor would make 15 scathes. Finally finish this thing soon? Come on. No, no. Come on, come on. Get those belt buffers ready to go. I'm also going to forget to put the hydrogen into those graph belts, which is going to reduce the capacity of this for a while. So I'm going to have to wait longer than I should for Colaris to start coming out. But even just one of them can already do damage. So the first, as soon as the first one comes out, I'm going to start like pushing into the tremendous amount of purple territory that needs to be ground down. Uh, and I broke the graphite input to my Kolaris factory by removing one belt because it was putting too much graphite in. So that's another thing to eventually see and go back and fix. Alright, that was the thorium input for the bomb constructor. Here it comes. I need to send the phase down. And there is the yeeters. Send the cleroid down. Escalation in one minute. This is actually, that's not ready for anthocuses, really. And I'm going to start putting in more. Check the range on those. It would work even better if I built it up uh, so that the furthermost we're hitting the range on that second approach. And then even more stuff would be getting burned down before it gets in. But the, the closer approach sort of gets in the way of that, and I don't end up doing anything about it because the back base is fine. It could have been a little bit better if I started this further down and then left space for a uh, more forward luster line once all of the westernmost approached units had been killed. Hmm. Need some hydrogen here. I'm gonna have to put repairs on these. Still in a silicon deficit. There should be spare silicon coming out from the Clairoy factory, and it's not because I broke it a while ago. Things would be going better if I saw the fix for that sooner. All right, we are in the second tier, 
of enemy unit production. So there should be T3 starting to approach, although it will take them a while to walk or drive or whatever they're doing. Yes. Yes, I actually want the phase to head down to the phase heaters. Why is this broken? I see why it's broken now. Fix it. There was a drill that was conducting power that I removed. All right. Now I see there's Anthicus. Uh, okay. And here come the safety belts. Uh, another important aspect of those belts is they give like cover so that you can build behind it without worrying about like a stray missile coming in and blowing up your 99% complete luster and wasting all the materials that went into it. And there's a precept. I don't know why it, like, it skips T1 completely as far as the attacking composition goes. One of the message blocks seems to suggest that the first uh, unit production is supposed to be T1 because there's like little unit icons and like rows with numbers in front of them. Uh, but I can't read the rest of it to figure out. There goes my 99% luster, you bastard. I should be getting Kolaris, but I'm not. Why not? Something's clogged down there, but I gotta fix this first. As for the main base, even with T3s coming, nothing to worry about there. Muster overpowered. Uh, these belts will be the reason that I eventually run myself out of beryllium later on. A lot of rebuilding to do. Cyanogen, that's what I forgot. I am already making it from the schematic. It's just a matter of trying to figure out how to wiggle a pipe to actually get down to where it needs to go. Need to jump over and then go. getting the graphite than I should and that's why those carbide crucibles are much more red than they should be it's because I didn't hydrogen these drills but that's easy to fix all right Kolaris construction finally happening after like 40 minutes uh, late, but whatever. We'll still be fine because lusters are overpowered. They're not overpowered in PvP. It's really easy to do micromanagement things to just completely negate them, unless there's a lot of them. But in here, with the brain dead attack UI or AI, super useful. All of this stuff just mindlessly walking itself into the grinder.
Are you building yet? Always remember to set the rally point on T5 factories because if we don't, then it will finish a unit and then not start building the next one because the output is blocked. So much stuff dies before it gets anywhere near my core. The last ghost of the bad starter base removed. I do want to make sure to leave an unobstructed path so that the ground units route themselves into the middle of the luster grinder instead of and trying to side approach it and maybe hitting something more vulnerable. Ooh, first Kolaris soon. And I also want quells. be the the two-pronged grinding machine to to get all this junk off the map quills and Kolaris. Well, for the quail factory i'm going to need some brillium sand and graphite and arcosite and that's it it's so easy to set up. It takes like the fewest inputs of any unit that's good at siege. I'm still kind of broken for how cheap they are, even though they were made more expensive by increasing the beryllium cost, which is not significant. All the other T4s want tungsten. And this T4 factory is actually like an old version from before its cost was nerfed, so the buffer isn't quite right, but it's close enough, and I'm too lazy to go back and fix it. Normally, a silicon arc just needs two plasma bores, but this is also an elude factory, so it needs a little bit more than that, since the eludes take graphite. In the sand, get some sand. And this wall has sand. Cliff crush, cliff crush, cliff crush, cliff crush. And some of those are metal walls for some whatever reason. Shred, 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 shred. Yeah, this is the point where I'm out of beryllium. And it's from rebuilding all those ducts there. Where am I gonna where am I gonna get more beryllium? Here's some more beryllium, and I've got hydrogen right there, so sure. And I've also got space to add another input duct, so I don't have to worry about clogging stuff. Those look pretty full, but not completely. Should go back and check on my Kolaris. Yeah, 
you know, those lusters at the top of the line are the real MVPs because they can cover both attack streams. Beef that up a little bit since I've got plenty of tanks and, and not enough beryllium. And let's finish this Quell Factory. Two Kolaris. Those will do good work. Like they can they can reach the first enemy core from that little peninsula. Uh, they can't cross it. And that sort of introduces the the first thing that's a little bit of a challenge about attacking even when you've got the siege units. Uh, Siege units are vulnerable to the stream of attacking units headed to my core. So that's like a whole linear path that I want to avoid with them. Or, you know, they have to have backup of some sort to actually do that fighting or be getting repaired or, or something. Especially if there's air units incoming, which they're totally defenseless against. But even if they're not, they prioritize shooting units over shooting buildings. So you're not actually getting any grinding done if they're constantly shooting at a stream of incoming units and not the, you know, other stuff that you know might be like defenses or walls or whatever. But in order to get these siege units to start working on the purple to the south, I'm gonna have to go all the way around that wet green puddle and it's gonna get close to the incoming unit stream. So they're gonna take some hits from Anthicus and that sort of thing. And, you know, start working on a avert factory for defending the Kolaris purposes. There's sand right here, and there's graphite right here. This is a good spot. Although the beryllium shortage is real. Yeah, I'm planning to put a second core there, assuming that because it's directly behind my base from every approach direction, that it won't actually change the enemy path. That assumption was false, because there is one Clairoy factory that is routing around and is actually closer to this location than the main base. Yeah, three Kolaris, let's go. Grind, grind, grind. Now it's just a matter of grinding through base and being on the lookout for any of the pieces that might be a little bit more dangerous, like Titans. There's malines around. Uh, afflicts are not the most dangerous, but they still might do some damage. And there's some smites. Whoops! And now I see my error, that there's one Clairoy that is going to head that way. So I need to scramble some defense. 
Now the vert factory won't really be able to do anything about it. A luster will do it. Can I build it fast enough? Am I going to run out of any resources? No, no, here, no. Oh, it's getting damaged. It's getting close. There it goes. So damaged. Just barely made it. Woo! Let's repair that. Bring some hydrogen down. All right. Oh, and the Claroy destroyed my silicon, so I'll need to put a few more of these a little bit further up, and then the Claroy will never get through again. And thus, my oversight is fixed. Yeah, the router always goes on the end of a connection where some sort of liquid is going into a combat structure because if that combat structure gets destroyed a router won't leak the liquid where a pipe exit would and then you might end up draining out everything you need oh there's a there's a vanquish we have hit another unit production escalate escalation so now there's Vanquishes and Tectas showing up. Those things all die to Lusters too. And we're gonna inch these closer to, to start working on this southern base here, which has some Vanquish factories immediately visible. And there's a tecta, tecta source here somewhere. We can bring the quells down easy enough. If I want to bring any of the land units, then they'll have to walk past the gauntlet. As for the defenses, tecta's vanquishes starting to approach. This corner here is a little bit weak. We're going to reinforce that. I'm swimming in carbide now. Go ahead and use carbide to do some of this. Though not too much because rebuilding busted carbide walls is a constant cost that might slow down other building. aware that there are titans to the left there that I need to be looking out for, otherwise I'm going to take some hits. Another common occurrence on this map is that attacking units get stuck in the factory spam and build up and back up. And when you're actually tearing down the base, Eventually, you will open up a hole for them to get out, and then suddenly there's a wave of like, you know, 8 or 20 or 30 vanquishes that can suddenly get out when they couldn't before. Yeah, we're taking a, we're taking a lot of Ampicus hits here. We need to beef up. We are edging the range versus that array of five titans, although there's another one to the south that is starting to take shots. These things can tank some damage, but at some point they'll put up uh, little forward healing arrays. Uh, even then, I still won't pilot it perfectly, and I'll, I'll lose some of them sometimes, which slows things down, but all you gotta do in a map like this is wait for more units to come back, you know? Go, go, go to drink. 
go go to the bathroom, go watch some YouTube, and come back, and all your units are back, and then go destroy the stuff. It's real exciting. The only source of time pressure here is the escalating waves, but all the lusters I've built up can already stop anything that's going to come even at the highest escalation of waves. So there's no longer any urgency, it's just grind. Well, let's start a descend obviates. And they stop the shoot at the belts instead of uh, getting hit by the lusters. So that's not a big deal. I do want to feel a little safer in this location since this is the concentration of all attacking force. Especially when those vanquishes explode into eight locuses, among other things. There's a lot of cyanogen pipes running all through all of the enemy construction. So a lot of stuff just burns down on its own. More Kolaris, let's go. Make this faster. The cat wants in again. Are you ready to watch some grinding? Here it is. Oh yeah, I don't I don't like it either. But this is what you gotta do to beat the map. The day is one, but there's a lot of work left. And it's not tough work, it's just busy work. The assumption that you can make anything hard by spamming all of the top tier turrets and item sources and unit factories. That makes it hard. Mm. You don't agree with that, do you? Mm. Are we healed yet? Sitting around instead of doing cool stuff. All right, six of them. That's a good amount to take out some titans. Oh, actually there was a core there that did the job for me. Nice. Shooting walls, shooting walls, shooting walls. Walls with menders, walls with build towers. This is a Kolaris factory, but that Kolaris is never gonna see the light of day. That's another weird balance feature of trying to put a map together this way is the strongest thing to do is to just rush and take out as much base as you can as quickly as you can so that the production escalations never even happen. The campaign is really bad about that. More healing. More healing. Less time wasting. Well, this whole project is time wasting, but I can choose to waste my time. And hopefully I can help protect other people from wasting their time trying to do the same thing. And play good maps instead of grind maps. This looks safe still. This looks safe still. Nothing to worry about. Look out for this afflict. He didn't look out hard enough. Oh, someone's gonna die. Oh, someone died. Oh. I'll go for this one over here. That'll get rid of some additional production. Oh, look at, oh. Don't lose, don't lose it to a breach. Don't lose it to a breach. Yes. Reinforcements. Maybe I should ask for, for unit kill counts. 
That would be an interesting statistic to see on these. Other RTS games have that. Don't we deserve things that other RTS games have? Now I'm going to run myself out of carbide. Whoops. Alright. Siege Army healed back up. Let's start grinding again. I have a carbide problem. Check your carbide. Check your carbide. Oh, I closed it up. We're going to start going around. Can't have that. Carbide is clogged. Clogged by tungsten. Where can I reroute? That is not a good enough reroute. There it goes. Trade places. That doesn't work. Don't rebuild that. Fix the nitro. Fix the nitro. Come on. No. Wrong. Don't look away. Alright, there's the gap to the next base. This is one third done. One third of grinding complete. The array of skates in the back corner of this base means that I can't approach with the Kolaris too closely. I can get some of the stuff on the edge. I, I can take out that Tecta factory on the edge down there. But that's about it. If I try to go in with ground forces, they're going to get smashed by 15x scathe missile over and over again. Um, I hate these bases. There's, there's extra payload conveyors all over the place. There's weird little bridges all over the place, and it just looks ugly. I should not do what I'm about to do, which is leave that base alone and head for the north base. And the reason I should not do that is because then I have to cross the unit stream that is all of the units coming out of the south base and heading towards my core. And unit streams distract all the shots and take pot shots at my units and all sorts of things I don't want. Right. Do what you're doing now and then send the quells back in. Send the quells back in. Come on. He's not going to do it because that's not what I did. I'd probably make the, the game like an hour shorter if I did that properly. The, the Mighty Avert is the most able to evade the Luster Melting. Mighty Avert. And now we start eating the Northeast base. And here's a huge glut of tanks. Now suddenly able to get out of the base. That'll be something to deal with.
Oh, there went a core, popped the core, and suddenly they're all free. Oh, horrible, horrible freedom. We don't want to watch that get to the base. Fry them. Fry them all. Your attack strategy is worthless. Worthless. For some reason there's a lewd factories there that never actually start producing. Makes the elude, the elude blows up. That's gotta be busted logic somewhere. No, no, you wasted. You gotta make for a better man, come on. You're gonna make this take even longer. Oh, and we had an escalation hit. Let's see what additionally comes out after that. And there's a quell. So that's the first, oh crap. Uh, Kolaris are very in danger of the quell. And it's got some logic on it, making it fight at range. I don't know why it doesn't use that logic when it actually comes after the main base and instead walks right into the lusters, but whatever. And the super annoying thing here is that I'm going to kill that and it's going to splinter into air units that fight back against the averts. Super annoying all the way around. And major misplay, there it is. I walked them into range of a malign that I didn't see and lost almost all of them. And they can range that if you're careful, but I wasn't careful. We lost another one. Come on. Take your vengeance, take your vengeance. So that was a huge waste and a big setback to make this take even longer. These are like the worst units for eating into that base. I'm not gonna do it like that. I'm, what am I saying? I am absolutely never going to play this map again. All right, yeah, this escalation is sending some T5s now. There goes a Calaris. It turns into two Tectus. Let's turn into four Ampicus. Caleroy. Something else. Whatever. It all splits apart. It all dies in luster flames. Conquer. Focus fire of 16 lusters actually get inside a little bit, but burn him down, burn him down. Blinding brightness. Sublimate even fired. Wow. Everything's purple. It's real hard to tell that I'm actually getting attacked by some verts in the middle of all that. Boom. I have no respect for one disperse that is not watered. Yeah. All this base spam made with the map editor and none of the purple turrets that can accept water are being given water anywhere. Like obvious way to make the thing harder and the guy didn't take it. Water sources, whatever. Sure, if you're gonna use sources for flux reactors and the phase to heat them align, then put water sources on your turrets too. And the Quaris are the right, or the quells are the right choice for nests of shock towers. Shock towers don't shoot missiles down. 
It's a game design mistake, but that's what's in the game. Three out of four siege units shoot an attack that shockwave towers ignore. Oh well. Lazy ore placement, so you can see the solid brush shape all over it. MS paint ass ore placements. What is that quell doing? Such a smart quell. Running away. It should want nothing to do with any of this. There's an escalation coming. I think this is the final one. So that'll be all the unit factories that are left active. And the magic latum drop. Yep, destroy enemy core. That's the last thing to do. So, the map is now doing everything to me that it can. And I've just got, well, I built a couple more, so. 18 musters versus everything that the map throws at me. Oh, there's a derpy avert. Dead. There's the Latam airlift. First one. It's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. So ominous. Shadowed. Spiky. Do my averts need to come help? N no. I don't need to do anything extra. It just dies before dropping it and is useless. All right, then. Ooh, second Latam. Maybe that'll do better. Maybe this will work. No. It doesn't even spill neoplasm. We've eaten through some walls. That's nice. We're gonna get these Kolaris factories. We're gonna get them. Oh, that Kolaris is almost finished. I want to stop it. Kill it. Kill it. Yes. Hey, look, cat, you've returned, and everything's still the same. Grind, grind, grind. Yeah, I can forgive you for losing patience with it. It's, it's not fun. It's just more busy work. Map. The next destination in this direction is Conquer Factories back in the upper corner. Ooh, another Latum. Why even pay attention to it? Tracking shot, tracking shot. Ooh, what's gonna happen to it? Such tension and uncertainty. And it's fighting, it's going to die. Yeah. Nothing different happens. I should just stop watching that. There's a conquer slowly making its way out of the terrible dense base. There's a bad Kolaris. Mm, bad. Get it. So close. Destroy the core. And then the Conquerors come out. So Conquerors wanting to pass by my Kolaris right here? I don't like that. I'm not happy with it. Just normally it sort of gets put on a conveyor belt and sent for a wild ride before eventually being deposited outside the base. Ah, uh, maligned. And another one's coming. So annoying. Everyone, out of the way. 
Let our esteemed guests pass by unhindered. We can go be greeted by the 18 lusters. Oh, is Claire, oh, you're in trouble. You're in danger. Well, here's another tank clog. Let's see how the tank clog fares against Tanklaris. Tank clog looks very confused. He's doing donuts in there. The tank clog is on fire. Whoops. The tank clog is fixed. Snap. Snap. Two and a half hours into this, it's time to start on breaking into the final base. And we've done our grinding. And we are rewarded with further grinding. Be aware that the scathe range is close to this point, so I can only do so much with the Clarice here. Break the outer shell so that the quells can dig through. Get rid of these afflicts. Are there any heat sources on those? It can't possibly be just one electric heater. That's not enough. The firing rate sucks, so maybe it is. Oh, there's the scabes. We've found their range. Brute force those disrupts. Disperse. Brute force. Brute force that language. I don't even respect them enough to know their name right. Two cores left. Map! Map! Let's watch. No, let's not bother. Sad. Now the stockpile of Latums has run out and the disperses are confused. They have no idea what to do with their lives. Wait for death? Pick up something else? What do we do? Ooh, they have an opinion. They want to pick up a Tecta instead. Or an Anthicus? Or a Claroy? Or nothing. Oh well. What 
are they trying to do? Kill the skates. Kill them. Ruin them. Skates are done. Doors open, boys. Well, except for some titans, but you know. There's so many of you. You can handle some titans. But aren't firing back for some reason. Dumb power? Boom? The last core in there. Tiny little bastion. And then our long nightmare will finally be over. A game that gets easier the closer you get to the end. So close, getting close, getting closer, walls in the way, as with everything for the past three hours, disrupts and won't do anything, standing around, can't do it. And it's over. Finally done. Victory assured. One out of five stars. Would not recommend. Later. <laughs>